executive producer Daniel Marin's guest hosting the show this Saturday, July 20th, 2013. This is a part of the show every week when we highlight the work of one person who is working and succeeding to make the world a better place. It's our Activist of the Week segment. This week we have a very special Activist of the Week. First, it's someone from this clip. I want to play this sound clip before I introduce him. Unfortunately for Trayvon, we would never know what was in store for him. All because America believed this innocent child was suspicious. My name is Howard Conde, proud alum of the Howard University School of Law and the Howard University School of Business. We all are not suspicious. Howard Conde, an alumnus of the Howard University School of Law and the Business School, a person who participated in a video called Am I Suspicious? that students and alumni of Howard University released back in March 2012 before the arrest of George Zimmerman to highlight the issues of racial profiling that were involved in the killing, arguably the murder, of Trayvon Martin. Joining us now is our activist of the week here on Take Action News, live from his parents' home in Natchitoches, Louisiana, Howard Conde. Howard, thank you so much for joining us. You are our activist of the week. Thank you. Thank you for um, having me. Definitely, definitely, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. And I appreciate the accolade as well. You're absolutely welcome, Howard. First of all, Howard, tell us a little bit about, I, you know, one of the things I did not mention exactly is how you originally got involved with the movement for justice for Trayvon. Back in March 2012, you, as an alumni, alumnus of Howard, of Howard University School of Law, and also as a member of a historically African-American fraternity, got involved in the effort to hold Zimmerman accountable and to originally get him arrested. In fact, you were one of the people that helped set up the petition that ended up garnering through several different avenues 2.2 million signatures and generating the public pressure that got Zimmerman arrested. Tell us a little bit about how you found out about Trayvon's death and what you did to take action. Okay, well, what essentially happened is um, one of my fraternity brothers, a guy um, by the name of Charles Sims, um, he sent everyone an email message, um, and it simply said FYI, and it had a, a link, a Yahoo link to a, a very little-known story at that time. And, of course, we clicked on the link, uh, I did, and I read the story, and it was the the, um, the Zimmerman Trayvon story. Um, some I can't remember the writer on Yahoo, but he had wrote about this story. And, you know, we felt that, you know, this was definitely an injustice, that this guy hadn't even been arrested. And, you know, I don't think that is what the justice system intended it for, a 17-year-old kid to come to be walking home, and to be killed, and for his killer to at least not be arrested and properly investigated and properly tried. So um, I had another brother, a guy named Kevin Cunningham, who sent us the actual petition. He sent the email and said, hey, I started a petition on change.org. Um, you know, let's see what we can do about that. So what I did, uh, me and another guy named Nate, Nate Nimmo, uh, we kind of led the, the social media effort with this petition, and I literally... I literally tell you, I would post this thing daily, nightly, uh, around the clock. And I remember I would always say, hey, I know you guys aren't paying attention, but I am going to post this every day, every hour, until you guys start to pay attention. And I think we ended up getting maybe out close to about 10,000 signatures on our own. And that's when Change.org reached out. And um, the family got wind of the petition, and we revamped the petition uh, we took our names off of the petition, and then we put a letter, letter from the family. Uh, so the petition would look like it, it came directly from the family, and we started to push that out again. And then, lo and behold, it ended up getting 2.2 million signatures, and the pressure um, led to George Zimmerman finally getting arrested 44 days after um, Trayvon was killed. It, it's an amazing story, and I think it's something that we forget when we uh, talk about the recent verdict in the case of just how long it took for this man to even be arrested for, for yeah. killing an unarmed teenager. And, and that's you know what's so shocking. And, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the implications that may have had for the verdict itself in terms of jury selection and how the movement built over those six weeks. But, I, I mean, 
you use essentially social media and people power to hold the entire American justice system accountable for what it was essentially a local news story that had been ignored. And that was ignored, yes. Yeah. You, you know, and and then it took another stage as well. And I, and I want to talk a little bit about this video that students at Howard University and alumni helped put together, and that is the Am I Suspicious video, of which I played a clip just earlier. How exactly, that was also before Zimmerman was arrested, if I'm not mistaken. How exactly did that take effect, and where were you at the time? Obviously, you had already graduated Howard University School of Law at that point. How did you get involved in that effort? Okay, um, the way that came about is... I knew a friend at Howard Law, a um, lady named Courtney Scruggs. Her and the other guy, um, Enzo, Nathan Enzo, that I, I told you about earlier, um, they were planning a, a, a video um, to kind of to kind of highlight um, Trayvon, Trayvon's story and you know kind of zero in on this whole suspicious debate. And then the undergrad students were actually planning the exact same thing, and I had a connection to both. And I suggested to the undergrad students, hey. Um, you know, why have two separate videos? You know, your leader should reach out to the leaders at the law school and, you know, you guys should come together and do a video. And essentially that's what they did. Um, the leaders at the law school and the leaders at the undergrad came together and ended up putting the video together and doing one central video um, for the for the school to be put out. The way I came involved in the video is I actually, the quote that I, I speak to in the video I actually wrote that quote on some flyers that the undergrad had passed out, um, trying to raise awareness around D.C., and they asked me to come do the video, be a part of the video, and to speak their quote in the video. So that's how I actively uh, became part of the actual video footage. And it, and it is an amazing quote, and we didn't play the full quote, but the, in the first part you say that, look, you know, we're not all criminals. We, you know, we are professionals as well and you know obviously and 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 when we're people and and look at us for for who we are and what our potential could be you know obviously you at this point you're you're a jd mba an attorney and i believe obviously you're visiting family in louisiana but you're based in new york city what i mean first of all with this video clip it didn't even go viral at the time uh, what, as far as I can tell, the reason it went viral, this was made back in March 2012, and it is an amazing video. Look it up on, on YouTube, folks. We'll, we'll tweet it out. Am I suspicious? And, and it, it went viral this week after the Zimmerman verdict, I think largely because George Takei, the old star of Star Trek, tweeted it out to his massive Twitter following. Were you surprised that it took this long for what I think is one of the most impactful, important pieces of art, uh, or rather, um, I don't know, art of, of, of sort of audiovisual messaging on this issue to take hold in the American public's mind? Well, actually, um, Daniel, to be honest, um, this is the second wave of the video. Um, the video did originally go viral um, back in March. Uh, I think we garnered around 300,000 views on YouTube back in March. And we also um, had a, a spot on one of BET's top-rated programs. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, BET 106 in Park. Of course. Yeah, I've, but, I, yeah. I'm not that familiar so, with it. But I, <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a video-based program. It's a program that um, they show videos of all the top you know, hip-hop artists. And back in March, they actually aired the, uh, the Am I Suspicious video. And it kind of died, died down for the last year. And then after the verdict, um, and after that guy, I didn't even know that he tweeted it out, um, the Star Trek guy, I guess it kind of got his second wave, and some people who originally never knew of the video became aware aware of it. So it's actually the second, the second time it, that it's, it's gotten some, you know, some, some mass media, a mass media push. Well, I, I stand corrected on that front. Ha- Howard, we've got a, a short break to go to, but when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Howard Conde. He is our activist of the week when Take Action News continues after this.